Welcome to Native Yoga Toddcast. So happy you are here. My goal with this channel is to bring inspirational speakers to the mic in the field of yoga, massage, body work, and beyond. Follow us at Native Yoga and check us out at nativeyogacenter.com. All right, let's begin. Welcome to Native Yoga Toddcast. Today, I have special guest Carla Petulo here joining us for this epic conversation. Carla Petulo is best known for her music that blends lush acoustics with layered vocals and experimental electronics. And her music, it strives to connect with the deep human emotions that are found in moments of grief, healing, redemption, and joy. She is the Grammy winner for 2024 Best New Age Ambient or Chant Album called So She Howls. And it features the Scorchio Quartet, who's worked with artists like Philip Glass, David Bowie, and Laurie Anderson. And also it features the vocal ensemble Tonality, which uh, has worked with artists like Bjork. And she also has a, the violinist Lily Hayden, uh, performing on the album. You got to check it out. You'll hear the link is in the description below. Visit her on her website, carlapatulo.com. And then you can listen to the album. So she howls on whatever listening, uh, device you like to use Spotify title, all that great stuff. Listen to it from the beginning all the way to the end and just, just Feel what kind of sensations come up for you. It's a really remarkable album, and it is, in a, it is a huge honor to have this opportunity to speak and meet and interview Carla. I hope you enjoy. Let's go ahead and begin. I'm really happy to have this opportunity to introduce you to Carla Patulo. She is a Grammy winner for 2024 Best New Age Ambient or Chant Album. For The name of the album is called So She Howls, which is featuring tonality and the Scorchio Quartet. Carla, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Thank you. Yay. Thanks. Happy to be here. And <laughs> yeah. Well, how cool. I mean, um, a Grammy award, that's one of the biggest awards we can achieve in the music industry. Can you tell me when you were recording this album, did you have any hopes that this would happen or did this just yeah. miraculously occur? How can you give me a little bit of insight? And I have a lot of personal questions I want to ask you too, but I want yeah. to just kind of jump in on like, uh, can you believe it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, first I can't believe it still. It's, you know, even a few months after, but you know, I definitely, when I started this album, you know, it was coming out of a very tough place uh, personally. And it was just really a diary for me. Um, and in fact, I thought it was going to just be my last album. Uh, so it was just this like, you know, fundamental need to have music in my life and to help me, you know, conquer my day basically <laughs> and wow. get through it. And, um, so the Grammys were like, you know, that was like the last thing, uh, you know, being a musician, I've always, you know, dreamed of, you know, yeah, someday I'll have a Grammy, you know, maybe, I don't know. It's one of those things that seem so far away, you know, and yeah. hard to attain. <laughs> yes, I hear yeah. you. I hear you. Is that, can you speak a little bit about when you said you were going through a challenging time, what was the challenge that you were going through that creating music helped you to work through? Yeah, that so I um this was just right before the pandemic hit, but um I got a, a diagnosis of breast cancer. Mm. Uh totally, you know, shocked about that too cuz it wasn't something that I had uh my family, anyone in my family had experienced. So it was really just shocking and um and um and you know, and it was a, a really like difficult thing cuz it, you know, you know, when somebody, there's so many unknowns with cancer, especially in the beginning as you're going through a diagnosis. And um, so there was like a good like month or two where I was just kind of like, what, what's going on? What, how, how much cancer do I have? Like what's, yes. you know, 
And, you know, those were the real hard months of, um, you know, just being utterly like, can't think of anything else, you know, can't, you know, music, my, my career, everything, like there's a big halt in my life. You know, and, and then, you know, the pandemic kind of was there. Everyone kind of was there with me soon after, unfortunately. But, um, mm. but you know, that's, you know, kind of where it started. And it was just a really hard um, journey through it. I bet. Um, yeah. I can't imagine. I always wonder how will, how would I or will I react if I receive that type of information? What, what type of treatment did you choose to undergo? Well, um, for the type I had, it was pretty st- like they it, it has evolved to a pretty standard treatment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was something called triple positive, which was hormone positive and also uh, her two positive and um, her two positive uh, within the last 30 years, I believe it was in the 90s. There uh, were these courageous women who took this trial and um and actually here in Santa Monica, they created a new drug called Herceptin, um, which is the drug that saved my life and made that cancer ground, you know, change uh, now to a really good, you know, well, a very treatable kind of cancer. Got it. Got it. How yeah. how long of a journey was that till from the time of diagnosis to the time where I'm guessing you're yeah. saying that you're you're in the free and clear? Is that is that true? Well, Yes, I'm in the free and clear. You know, it's you know you go you do like the the drug ke- uh, chemo and the Herceptin part and the surgery and then radiation. So you really do everything with this type of cancer. That's the downer. Yeah. Uh, but the results are so good, and you know, uh, I was one of the lucky ones that it really worked well for. So it was just a physical. Um just hard physically, you know, to get through it, but I would say even harder mentally, you yeah. know, just to yeah. process everything. Cause it's happening so fast. It's like, you know, Ooh, we don't know what's going on. Now we know you're getting better and it's just moving fast. And I've been, you know, uh, so the treatment's long and you do take preventative medicine down the road. So it was a few years there. Um, and of course, like I still take hormone therapy now. Mm. So, um, Understood. but The irony is I feel, you know, coming to this like really tough illness, I'm like healthier now than I've ever been. (laughs) Like I got myself together (laughs) and I go hiking, I go to the gym, I'm, you know, exploring new activities and, you know, keeping myself fit, eating well, you know. All those things yeah. you you weren't thinking about before, I'm guessing. No, just took no, for granted, I, or just figured I could do this forever, or nothing's going to hurt me, that type of thing. Or yeah, <laughs> and you know, be it be it exactly like you know something with that mindset when you're <laughs> in your 30s, you're still like, oh, whatever, you know. Um, but it did, you know, it was a real growing point. Uh, you know, I really grew like thinking about my health, and you know, I feel like I write better music now, even because. You know, I used to be in my studio, sometimes meeting film scoring deadlines, and I would just sit in a chair for 14 hours and like really not think about it, you know, mm, and just, yep. you know, be like, oh, I'm a hard worker. Yeah. And I'd get really burnt out. And, you know, so allowing myself to say, no, my body is number one. It It's like everything follows, you know, it's like yes, this momentum yes. yeah. that gives me more creativity more, you know, just I'm more, I'm more create. Yeah. I'm more creative, I think because of it. And that's amazing to hear. And I'm so congratulations. That's an incredible journey. Thank you. It's inspirational too. I'm sure there's lots of, I don't know what the stats are. What are the stats these days for the amount of people, not just cancer, but maybe even more specifically breast cancer? I mean, I think with breast cancer, they say it's like, like one out of every four women, wow. something crazy like that. And, yep. um, and with the type I had, it's like 20% of that. So it's, I think there's been so many great strides with breast cancer. Uh, when I first got diagnosed, I learned quickly how many types of breast cancer there are. I mean, there's really a lot of different kinds of breast cancer alone. Um, yes. Yeah. So it's just, you know, it's, it's, 
you know, I think there's always room for improvement. I think, you know, with the type I had, I was very, very lucky. You know, I have a very small chance of it coming back. I mean, it's not zero, but, but, you know, I'm deciding to live with the high percent in my mind, you know, that I'm okay and just do yeah. everything I can to lower that, you know. Do you, do you feel like there's in the back of your mind, there is that worry and or concern of like, well, how, what, what could this happen again? And that type of thing. Is that, do you, yeah, do you... you know, it's, it's gotten better. Like the first yeah. year or two, I was, you know, anytime I felt something or, you know, I was really a little bit more panicked, you know, even, even going to any doctor, going to the dentist, like yeah. I had that like PTSD of like, what's <laughs> going to happen, you know, like, um, so it took a while, yeah. I think like giving myself and my body, like the time for me to like recognize and, and, and take the time with my body to see how I'm feeling myself. I think that's key. Cause like, there's this whole, like, like trust, broken trust thing that happens. Like, mm. you know, like it was yeah. so weird. I could detach myself from my body and be like, what's wrong with you? How did you get cancer? You know? <laughs> yeah. Good point. But, then, but now, yeah. But now like, you know, it's like, I'm trusting my body again. And I'm also very aware of what I'm, you know, doing to my body. Like, you know, I've made the choices yeah. to cut alcohol, to do different things, to, you know, anything that I can do to, to prevent it. And that, that gives you power, I think. Yeah. It sounds like you have a greater, mm -hmm. almost uh, uh, an enhanced uh, appreciation for life. I, I hear that from folks yeah. that, that make it through battling cancer, yeah. that you just come out a different person. Yeah. I mean, well, there's just so much gratitude every day, you know, like we know how, what it's like to wake up and, you know, not feel great or to wake up and, you know, and just, you know, not this unknown, let the fear swallow you, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I think like, you know, when you can wake up and just have a moment to appreciate yeah. just what's around you in that moment, that's amazing. Oh man. Uh, what type of, um, how did music interact with, how did you interact with music yeah. through this whole process in relation to creating this album? Well, you know, there's a point when you're going through stuff where you're, you want to like keep yourself busy, but also like, I was just really like unmotivated when I was going through it. And so I just like, you know, little by little, I started singing really howling and that's where the name. So she howls comes from, <laughs> um, into my phone, you know, I would just record little things. And then, you know, as it was like in motion with what I was going through, you know, with like, with the news I was getting from my doctors, you know, there was optimism there. And so, okay, maybe I'll set up a microphone. And I just would sing, you know, it was a different way of composing because nothing was pre-planned. There was no like this, I'm going to write an album about this and that because First, it was like, I'm going to write a song or like, I'm just going to sing this into the microphone and see what happens. Wow. And that was very much the album. And, you know, and I kept all those vocal tracks, you know, I just, I kept all the rawness because I felt like I was recording a time and place and I wanted to preserve that. I don't think I could recreate, recreate those emotions. And why mm. would I, you know, like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Very so, cool. Well, yeah. what was your... Uh, what is, can you give me a little bit of a understanding of your background with music and when did you first, uh, fall in love or come in contact with, uh, playing or performing music? Were you young or is this something that you yeah. picked up later on? I, I, you know, I, um, I, I grew up, my parents and my grandparents were from Italy and we all like, you know, we all lived in this house and they would always sing. They were from a small farm town. And my grandmother was like, would always be like, let's go and, you know, um, sit down, press this tape recorder and record me because I want you to have these like tapes of me when you grow up. And I kind of, you know, felt like fell in love with music. And, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like soon after I just, I started playing with like a toy piano and, you know, I always remember though, wanting to create something new and not necessarily play like, you know, Mary had a little lamb or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so even very, I really think even very early on when you were learning those classic yeah. nursery rhymes and you, you right away felt like I want to make my own song. 
Yeah, it was, you know, I don't know. I just would That's just cool. think about, you know, I just remember thinking like, oh, I just want to go off and play something that sounds great. And, um, and you know, and, and it, it was interesting to see like my grandparents too, like, because they didn't have that, edu- you know, music education. They grew up in this small town and, uh, and just to see like their talent, like, even though they just were like, we're storytellers, we're just passing on these folk songs or it just inspired me. That's so and, cool. Um, yeah. And like, you know, and then I started to not, you know, go to school and play in the band and do all that and learn instruments. Um, but then, you know, I just got it started writing. Yeah. Cool. Well, when did you, when did you write your first song? How old were you? I think I was like 11. <laughs> And it was a song I remember. It was called Lies, Lies, Lies. Lies, (laughs) I don't know who I wrote that. Was it because like you figured out figured out Santa Claus? Santa Claus wasn't real. I mean, (laughs) that's classic. I I have an 11 year old daughter, so I'm trying to imagine that what what would her first song be like? (laughs) If she came up with Lies, 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 I'd be like, wow, she's she's deep. She's gonna she's gonna take this far. That's amazing. What what instrument yeah. were you composing with? What was your first um, love in relation to instrumentation? Well, I you know I had been t- using the saxophone, doing that in band. That was my introduction, but really the piano was my first instrument. And I just began writing and singing. But when you know I decided to learn how to sing and play the piano, really, so I could accompany myself and write songs, <laughs> you know, and get the yeah. knowledge to like yeah. to to do that and. Um, and so that's kind of how that grew. Yeah. And, you know. Amazing. I see. I mean, uh, for those of you that are listening, you can also check us out on the YouTube video and your background. I see lots of instruments. I see pianos yeah. and guitars. Yeah. And how many yeah. instruments do you play proficiently? Well, yeah. Well, OK. So as a composer, like we, there's a joke that we really don't play all these musicians, these instruments. Great. <laughs> We know how to like dabble in all of them so we can create something. And then, you know, a lot of times when we have the sessions, we'll call over, you know, mm. a really great guitarist who will like knock it out in a minute. You know? Got it. Got um, it. But I play, I, I try to pick up a lot of different instruments. I love actually learning a new instrument. So I, I don't know if you see, I might be blocking the cello. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> the cello is something I picked up actually during the pandemic and during my cancer journey. Um, and I was able to use that on the album a little bit. Um, but of course, I brought in the Scorchio Quartet because um, they're phenomenal. Uh, but in a very fundamental way, I, le- I just would play like certain notes. Uh, and I was kind of exploring binaural beats. So I was trying to just get into frequency ranges that um, could put your mind in a really um, good state of mind, you know, of relaxation. Very cool. I know the description from the award or the category that your album is in says new age ambient or chant album. Yeah. When you were, when you were composing this music, did, were you thinking to yourself, I'm creating a new age album. I'm creating no. an ambient <laughs> album. <laughs> what, are you, are you? Tr- I'm very anti, I'm actually pretty <laughs> anti genre, to be honest. Yeah. I, you know, and in working in films and doing film scores, I do a lot of different kinds of genre. You know, I go all over the place and I used to be in a rock band and I used to play with Sandra Bernhard and, you know, do all sorts of stuff. And when I was creating this, it really was just, what do I need to get through this experience? What am I feeling? Nice. And, you know, and then kind of along the journey, you know, t- sharing it with my agents and, 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 and music professionals of mine, they're like, you know, you should really go for a Grammy. And, um, you know, and then, you know, the conversation is what category do you put it in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're like, uh, which is always tough because it's, you know, I mean, I understand the reasoning for it, but I also think that, you know, I just don't like to be restricted to being in a genre. I like to kind of flow around and not think about that. Well, it's so cool because when I listen to your album, it's, it's amazing. And it's, I, um, thank you. I, Would I would if I were you, I would I don't know what category. What were the other categories that you would 
what were competing yeah. for this category? What other categories could you have opted uh, for? Some people make? were saying it was really hard. You know, some people were saying a classical compendium because, you know, there were strings and, cl- you know, the instrumentation could go there and there was this concept. And, uh, but, I, you know, I don't know. And, and I think in the end, I think the healing part of this is what kind of put it in that category. And yeah, um, that makes sense. And yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And and so when you say film score, you record music for movies and, and how does that work? Does, does somebody come to you and say, we're doing a mystery thriller or uh, it's a draw, it's a, it's a rom-com or, and how do yeah. you how how do you know what to write for the specific scene? Like, what are the logistics of that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really like like you were saying the genre, like everything's all over the place, and the style of the film and the director, it's all over. I would say, like you know, I get really attracted to stories over like what type of story it is, and usually, you know, a film director will come to me and you know, either they've heard some of my work or I'll send them some of my work if I want, really want to work with them. And and we see if it's the right match, you know, totally artistically, if I have the style that they're envisioning. Um, and then like, you know, it just, you know, it's like you take in a story, like almost like my story, it's very similar to like my story through breast cancer. I'll look at a film and say, what's this story? And how do I, you know, how do I bring this to life and support it? And, um, and you know, it's a lot of, you know, really like letting yourself sink into this film and really, you know, you got to be open, but you're, you're also a little bit, um, you know, you're stuck in time in film. So you have to like write music that is like two picture and there are restrictions but sometimes those ex- restrictions create really cool things, you know. Cool. I've never actually really thought about that. So do they do you, do they send you the film without all the sound effects included and let you yeah. actually watch that first or are you reading the screenplay first and A little uh, bit of both, you know. I the process is different with every film. Like sometimes I'll get the script, which I really love being involved in that process because I'm just kind of envision envisioning things. And it's so fun to finally see that to picture, but um, I like to work with the strict, the script just to get thematic ideas going uh, before anything is set in stone. Yeah. And, and then I'll get the, an actual cut of the film and the film usually has like some temp sound effects or, uh, but at least the, obviously the dialogue and, um, and sometimes they'll even have temp music, you know, because a lot of editors like to edit films with music. And um, and so which, you know, composers are like temp music. It's kind of, you know, a good thing and bad thing because you kind of get influenced by it a little bit, you know, so you, you don't necessarily want to do that. When you yeah. say temp music, you mean like temporary, temporary sound? Exactly. You know, it won't be exactly. there, but that that could color your... Right. <laughs> whole, whole thing. And like, yeah, almost like if you could start with the silent one, it, it may be, be easier. Yeah. It's like open and you can really kind of discover your own sound. So maybe you watch I mean, the it, film silently. Yes, you, I do. You, so that's a lot of it. Like, you know, I just, even if there's temp, I'll just put the whole film silently with just dialogue uh, and, yeah. you know, really kind of map out what the arc of the story is. And, you know, what I'm basically doing is, you know, when the, the actors are bringing an element, a, a huge element of the emotion in. And what I'm doing is just amplifying that mm. in mm. areas, you mm. know, where it needs it, you know, or maybe there's no dialogue and there's a something that the director is trying to say. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's um, I kind of like doing that just to figure out the arc. That is know? so interesting. I love hearing about this. I, I like to play music. I, I'm not nearly as talented as you, but I, I uh, do really appreciate it and I love it. And so it's so cool to hear the inner workings of how, 
how this goes about. So I'm curious, what type of level did you take your music theory education to? Did you go to school yeah. for this or is this coming all I, from your 11, 11 year old, you know, like just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I really like worked hard and through high school. I had a really great band teacher, but I did go to Berkeley. Wow. And, um, That's a big for my deal. undergrad. Yeah. Yeah. I went there for my undergrad and I went to grad school cause they have a program for specifically for film scoring in Spain. Um, and wow. I love Berkeley. It was, I knew, you know, this was the school for me. Uh, you know, just with the contemporary music. And I just, you know, I was doing more pop and rock back in the day. And it just felt like a great, you know, place. And, and you know, they had really great majors like songwriting, <laughs> which my mom and dad weren't really sure. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're thinking, oh, that boy. Degree. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but there was a major there that they're pretty big in that I did not take, which I kind of look at now, like, uh, maybe I'll take some classes there, but for music therapy. Mm -hmm. And they were one of the few schools that taught that if if not, maybe the only school at the time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. And that's, this is the idea of basically using music as a therapeutic tool. So you create sound that potentially can help to take someone from a high stress state into a more calm. Yeah. And can you explain a little then, because you may use the terminology by Arnold sound when you were creating this yeah, album. Can you explain nar- that a little bit? By Arnold beats is something I experienced going to acupuncture um, that was playing in the background. And I, you know, I had asked um, my acupuncturist, what is this? I'm like so relaxed, like, and, and she was t- explaining it to me. And, and I thought, oh, this would be great to bring this element in on the album. And basically... Usually, you know, you really can hear it with headphones and you can really you really should experience it with headphones. But um, you basically have two different tones and um, they you know, you'll pick two different frequencies and the difference between those frequencies, that magic number, it takes you into a state of mind that is, you know, either relaxed or, you know, more um, clear, you know, you can see things here, here and see things more clearly. And um, so it's really the difference between two tones and frequency gotcha. that have scientifically been proven to, you know, help you get into different states of mind. And I just find that fascinating. That is so fascinating. Um, Yeah. Are you experiment? It sounded like you were experimenting with blending different tones and then what, just paying attention to how you felt and then just work off that sense felt of what you're hearing to guide you in the writing process. Yeah, it, it really was. And I think, you know, I think one of the big things from this album was like being really aware and listening, you know, it's the first track. Cause if you listen, it's like, you know, it could be just like a simple string. Like, but really listen to how it's vibrating. And, you know, so in in a way, like, you know, I wrote, uh, I didn't overwrite for this album, which is always a tough thing for composers because we tend to overwrite. But I just let it sink in and you was very intentional kind of with the different notes and just, you know, really trying to be simple and just let your mind have the space. Mm. you know, while you're listening to it. That's so cool. Do you, do you have a process of, I recently, I, I love jazz, but I don't know a lot about jazz. And so I've started diving in a little more into listening and, and attempting to see what type of visual imagery comes just from listening. And, and, and I often wonder if like, say the saxophonist or pianist, is almost trying to talk through the instrument and, and tell a story through the notation. Yeah. And um, do you, do you do that? Do you, do you interact with music in that way where you're, where you just try to hear it from a different place versus the analytical mind? It sounds like you do. Of course, of course yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the howling kind of like, you know, it's just kind of this like free flow, you know, yeah. improvisational stuff. You know, a lot of the melodies on the album, they just were first takes of what yeah. came out. Yeah. And there that's something, you know, that I, you know, hadn't really experienced before. It's almost like just improving and playing a live show and, you know, but as a composer saying, okay, that's the composition. It was really cool for me cuz I don't come from the jazz world and and I and I love that about jazz and I love that, you know, when 
you know, you can just come out and 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 make the statement with your instrument, and mm. that's it. That's the mm. composition. And, yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. When you were in school, did you have this idea in your head? I would like to be a film score musician, or were you going to school thinking I want to be a rock star? I want to be like a famous musician that tours. And then it turned into, well, wait a minute, actually, I need to make money. Or like, how did did your musical career develop post your graduation? Yeah, like everything great. I feel like all these unexpected things happened to me in in life. And none of it was really (laughs) pre-planned, you know? (laughs) Like, I mean, like... You know, I wanted to be a songwriter. You know, I was like, I knew I wanted to write songs. I knew that's what I did. Um, And how to make money that way was always like, ooh, I don't know. You know, I guess I have to be a rock star. I guess I have to like, you know, have a fan base and do all that and go on tour. And I did that, you know, and I, 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 you know, I went on tour and I, you know, but then like, you know, things happen, things shift, you know, I might have lost my mom. That was a really tough thing for me in my life. And, you know, stuff happens that you just throws you off your course. And um, and then, you know, that I met Sandra Bernhard. That was a really pivotal mm-hmm. moment for me. Uh, someone who I've always, you know, had admired and um, just a big fan of. And to be able to rock out with her at South by Southwest, where I met her, was incredible. And, you know, that was a turning point for me of getting into film scores, actually. Now I I can see it now looking back because, Mm. you know, I I began touring with her and music directing for her. And that was the first time like of like experienced music through someone else's story Mm. and really just saying this is storytelling, you know, whether it's my story, her story and the music is, you know, supporting that and like, or being a part of telling that story. And, Um, and then like, I started like just getting into film scores just naturally, like, you know, it just kind of all started happening at the same time. And and then I just really fell in love with it. And then when I learned the process of it, I fell in love with it. Um, I think for songwriters and musicians, uh, music on film and TV has been a, a way to make money. Um, because, you know, album sales are don't work how they used to back in the day, you know, so it, it became a very sustainable uh, thing for musicians. And I, so I think that's helped keep me here too. Yeah. 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 Oh man. That's so cool. <laughs> do you, you, you live in LA? I do. Yeah. Where did you grow up? Yeah. I grew up in Massachusetts, actually uh, Springfield area, Western mass. And um Nice. Yeah. Was your move to the West Coast when you went to Berkeley? No. So Berkeley's actually in Boston. Oh, and my gosh. There, cause there is a Berkeley here. Oh, uh, I'm that's thinking not of, a music school. That makes yeah. more sense. It's funny because I, <laughs> I know someone here who's a musician and she said that she went to Berkeley. And I was thinking, I knew she was from the Northeast. So, but then when you said Berkeley, my mind went to San Francisco. For yeah. some reason, I apologize. Well, thank you for clarifying no, that. Ha- that that, that <laughs> happens. I mean, it's the other Berkeley. <laughs> so when was when was your move to Los Angeles? It was very gradual uh, because I moved to Austin, Texas first, uh, and it was to that seat, and that's where I, I met up with Sandra and all that and South by Southwest. Yeah, and then I moved to, to you know in 2012 I moved out here, um, and I, you know, it was a, a little tricky to get into the vibes of LA. Um, at first, you know, haven't been in, you know, I've, I've, I was Boston, New York, Austin. I've always been on the move, you know? Yeah. Um, but I love it now. I've grown to really love it. Um, and you know, I love the sunshine as maybe you can relate to, too, you know, like <laughs> the sunshine. Is good. I've never heard that before. That's a good one. I like it. <laughs> yeah. We need yeah. some sunshine in life for sure. Right. <laughs> Yeah, everyone yes, everyone flocks that. here to Florida this time of the year because it's yeah. so brutal up up north right now. With the the storms are still coming in, apparently. So I, I hear you. We get spoiled. I know. Yeah, uh, that's cool. I I my wife and I also had lived in San Diego, and I would go to L.A. a lot. Yeah. And uh, you're right. The weather is spectacular. 
It is pretty it amazing. It really is. Yeah. 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 I hear you. Yeah. So with your with your album now, what what type of process happens in relation to do people ask you to perform yeah. live the type of music that you created? Is this is the type of music you created not possible to recreate in a live setting because of the amount of different choreo- textures? Yeah, and, textures. Yeah. yeah. And actually I performed a couple shows this year. I did a release party and then I did a show, you know, that was uh, closer, you know, after I got nominated for a Grammy, I did a show out here at the hotel cafe and, um, you know, it's different. And, um, and I love performing. It's a very stripped down version of me on piano and my voice. And, uh, usually I'll have like a violinist with me and, um, it's like, it's very stripped down. And I actually, really love it because it's it's you could hear like the um the fundamental parts of these songs and it's very like uh kind of how where it started mm-hmm. you know and so i yeah. feel like you know they've been really fun shows cuz you know they're just it, it, and it, my vocals just get to go all over and and really kind of improvise too so the space i lean into the space that the album has and um and you know and i'm try to grow off that, you know, I've, I've been myself going to sound baths out here. And, um, and so I'm working a project I'm working on is developing a show that's, you know, kind of in between a live show at a venue, but also to get you into kind of this meditative space. Yeah. Well, that's a great idea. Yeah. I, you know, I love like trying new things. So I think it'll, It'll be fun. Yeah. It's so cool. You know, the sound bath thing, I, when I first got introduced, I just wasn't sure what to expect. And uh, my wife and I have a studio where we're always looking to host people and bring new things oh, in. Cool. And I don't want to say I was skeptical, but I just thought, oh, you know, someone will be playing bowls and we'll lay on the floor. Yeah. Are people going to like that? But since the first one, I, I'm surprised at how much people love it and how much I love it. It's really nice. I'd love to hear what your creative thoughts are in relation to creating an experience for people in that sort of setting. If you were to create a sound bath like experience, would you ask people to either lie down on the floor or sit on the floor meditation? Are you thinking a little more like a a theater like setting where people are sitting comfortably in like a classic seated chair situation and you're on a stage or what, what kind of thoughts have you had in relation to creating that type of experience? Yeah. You know, I have thought about it kind of, you know, going from both extremes of, you know, between a live show and a sound bath of, of having people still be at a venue where they are, you know, sitting uh, but you know, it's still a quiet space, you know, not like a bar or anything like that, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but like also, uh-huh. you know, just a place where, you know, you could just close your eyes and, you know, you, you just listen to the vibrations and be in this place where, you know, you're just taken in and, uh-huh. and, 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 and letting yourself be by yourself, even though you're in a group of people and, um, and so I, I, I kind of just want to have like, you know, acoustic instruments, nothing really amplified, you know, maybe yes. like my voice, you know, but um, but very minimal amplification. I think, you know, just hearing those being in a space that's small enough where the acoustics are, you know, really vibrating and resonating through the room uh, naturally without, you know, having amplification, I think would be. Yeah. yeah. That sounds cool. Yeah. Have you yeah. been, being in LA, you have a lot of yoga studios around you. Have you ever Too. tried a yoga class? I have tried a, so yoga has been something very hard for me, but I'm mm-hmm. trying a little by little. My partner loves it. Um, so she has, uh, together we've been, you know, just doing stuff at home. She'll pull me in at home on videos and stuff like that. And, yeah. um, and, and I, and I'm, I'm really, I'm pushing myself to do it because I know the benefits are amazing. And yeah. every single doctor has told me to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this will be good for your stress. Do this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you think is holding you back? I'm curious. 
You know, it's that um, I did a, a, a class out here actually called Five Rhythms, and I think it's the trauma right now for me it very much feels like I need to move, you know, yeah. like that's yeah. that's staying yeah. still physically yeah. is really yeah. hard. So when I, I I feel like I'm, you know, I just started a boxing class. So just to give you a perspective yes. of yeah. where I am mentally yeah. and emotionally, I, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> understood that's so cool i mean i think that's so smart you have to do that right just because somebody says yeah. this is good for you if it's not yeah. resonating you got to figure out well, what, that's what is good for my, you yeah my goal yeah. is to get there and get that you know and, and work out these knots in my stomach and i know it'll yeah. be very beneficial yeah. for me when you reckon when you uh reference trauma are you referencing the experience of going through the cancer diagnosis and treatment or are yeah. you referencing other elements that have that occurred in your life? Yeah, I think that, but I think also like grief, you know, has been really hard. You know, I lost my mom when I was 25 and I really struggled with that. Uh, you know, she passed in a car accident. It was oh, very sudden. I'm so sorry and for your loss. Yeah, That's tough. you know, and it, and, and it was just so hard, you know, like I think, you know, through the years getting over that and, you know, and, and, and grief has always been really hard for me to process, you know, and, and it, you know, of course it's, it happens, you know, we lose people in our lives and just being able to grapple with that, um, you know, and, yeah. you know, there's so many triggers yeah. that we have like, yeah. and, and so coping is a thing, you know, either we, you know, learn the skills to cope is, is, is hard. And I think, that is something that I look to for music, but also with, you know, potentially yoga, I think, or, you know, working out, it really just, you know, yes. is a space to kind of work that out. Yeah. I hear you. Do you feel like our country is making steps forward to be more supportive and inclusive and, it's, and also in the realm of the LGBTQ um, family, do you, do you feel like we're making strides? Do you feel like we're in the same spot we were a long time ago? What are your thoughts no, and feelings I, in that department? I think, you know, it's, I think it's a thing where we take a few steps forward, we take a step back, you know, it's back, you know, but I do think we are moving forward. I mean, I, I last year did a project for Disney about a young girl coming out to her parents. And I'm like, I did definitely did not have that growing up. So if you look at the big picture, I yeah. think, we're doing better. I, I'm noticing, you know, kids being able to, uh, you know, express themselves and, or, you know, or at least, you know, have that conversation with their parents more, you know, I'm, but it's definitely not all there. You know, I think, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I'd like to think that as we move forward, it is getting better because, I know personally, I have to hold on to the positivity of what's happening. Uh, yes. If I, you know, just drowned in the negative stuff, it's, you know. Yeah. You got to kind of stay in the positivity, but also say there's still more work to be done, you know? Yeah. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. W were you able to have that conversation with your mom before she it did wasn't. Pass? Yeah. And, and, you know, that's one of the things that I've been working out. I, I do yeah. think you know, in the end, I do think we would have worked through it and worked yeah. it out. I mean, that's yeah. how close we were. I yeah. knew, you know, but she was, she grew up Catholic and, you know, and it, 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 I think it would have been hard at first. And, yeah. uh, but I do think we would have worked through it. And, um, I oh, just watched cool. a film actually yeah. about this that blew me away called all of us strangers. I haven't seen that. Uh, it's, you know, it's actually this conversation. It's, it's, it's exactly that. And I, and I, I was like in tears <laughs> the whole movie was so moving. Yeah. Um, but you know, those conversations that you don't get to have with someone who passed and, you know, as you grow up and not, you know, I'm getting older and I'm coming towards the age of my mom when she passed, you know, mm. and that's like, I hear, I you. don't know. I know there's just no way to prepare for losing a parent. It's just not, everybody told me about it. And then when it, happened to me too. I was like, and then years go by and you're still gone. I'm still processing this. I'm still trying to come yeah. to terms with this. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And we hear, it really is. We hear about how uh, parents that outlive their children, how terribly difficult that is for them too, right? Like 
I hope yeah. I don't ever have to experience, you know, I hope that yeah. that's not an issue, but it's, it's amazing when you, once you go, once you have enough people tell you, get ready for this event in your life, you don't really fully comprehend it. Then the event happens and then you go, Oh my gosh, I really couldn't hear what they were saying. Then you hear somebody yeah. else say to you, get ready for this really big event in your life. And now you go, uh oh, <laughs> like, yeah, I better get yeah. ready for this because that last <laughs> one was so intense. What yeah. can I do? But I know there's no way to fully prepare them to just like take care of ourselves and just be as like, you know, honest and truthful yeah. and ready for anything and breathe and try to like keep our anxieties at, you know, in a place where it's we really can, hard. It's, yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, for me, like the sudden shock of losing you know, when someone dies suddenly like that, and then, you know, having gone through cancer or would have been, you know, this slow, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. kind of slow thing, yeah. just mind, it, my mind plays tricks on me going through that and not always being afraid of like when someone calls me at like, you know, if a family member calls me late at night, it's not bad news all the time, yeah, you know, or good point. Good point. You know, yeah. That first this, reaction of like, oh gosh, it's gotta be something horrible. You're right. right. That is that reliving of that, that phone yeah. call that you did get. Yeah. Good point. On the flip side though, uh, yeah, just to know, yeah, please. Cause we were talking about cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I live in that, you know, 95% survival chance mentality or whatever that I have, because you could, something could cr crazily happen. That's life, right? There's always yeah. the chance, 5% yes. chance yes. or whatever that, yeah. you know, you know, I could wake up and, you know, something get hit by a car yes. or something horrible. You know, you just don't know. Good point. And so. I hear you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the, I well, first of all, thank you for all your honesty. And I really appreciate yeah. just, I, I just well, feel so you. thankful to have a chance to, to meet you and to, you know, I love that we're just meeting and, and that you feel comfortable to be so honest. So thank you. That means a lot to me. And I really love how this album came to be. Like, it just seems like you really put your whole heart into there. And clearly the people that judge the entrance into these sort of competitions thought the same thing too. And listening yeah. to, and listening to it, it's definitely palpable that something's going on. So it's a very yeah. broad array of soundscape and um, how cool. That's so cool that you, <laughs> you just threw your heart in there. Cause I know any, as a, as any storyteller, I think, I think any storyteller, you have to be bold enough to put your story out there. And it's kind of a little intimidating sometimes because of judgment and like yeah. all that stuff. How have you, yeah. how have you, um, what gave you that drive to be willing to do that? Was there, did you ever have that uh, challenge of feeling comfortable enough to just say, I'm, I'm willing to put myself out there? Yeah, I think it's a great question. It's mentally, like, I think I evolved through this process of the Grammys because, well, you know, when I first, you know, even released the album or thought about releasing it, I didn't want to tell anybody that I had cancer. I, I just, I, I didn't even want to talk about it. Like even talking about it with close friends would trigger me, you know, at that yeah. point. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of, it's just momentum. It, yeah. it, the momentum of it, releasing it and people like, you know, colleagues, music colleagues reaching out and saying, I heard your album, like, you know, I actually, you know, I had a really horrible experience, you know, and this has been really helpful, you know, and they'd be like, if you feel comfortable, I'm curious what you went through. And, and or they would tell me they went through cancer and, and then it would like open me up to be able to share. So very much reciprocal of the people listening, mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. it's, it's it, that energy, like, you know, is it's circulating. <laughs> yeah. So it's healing me, like the people listening yeah. to it and talking yeah. to me about it is healing me as well. So that's amazing, Carla. <laughs> that's pretty cool. 
Yeah. That's, just a, that's cool. Being open. Yeah. Being open to it is it's something, you know, you can yeah. get hurt, but you know, it's I don't know. You there, there's something when you go through something life changing like this or that's so scary that, you know, you all of a sudden are open. There's this openness that you can um yeah. just put yeah. it out there. Yeah. Um, that's great advice for anybody who's listening that's going through a life-threatening illness. When you meet, say you meet somebody uh, at a party or an engagement of sorts and they say to yeah. you, I have breast cancer yeah. or, or, or I'm going through a terminal diagnosis, potential terminal diagnosis. Um, what's your first response? It, it, I mean, we have to imagine it, but what, what, what it, would your first response be? To hug them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good answer. And to say and to tell them, you know, I was here, you know, and yeah. you know, and just, you know, be there for them. Yeah. You know, I, I th- during my journey, I can't like I, I I I don't remember all the people's names or I didn't even know people's names, the random people that would help me, like the nurse that I had for five minutes who would give me that hug or you know make me feel better. Um there's so many people that I want to thank that I, you know, uh, that I don't even know, you know, yeah, that, we, you know, yeah. that knew, I knew briefly it's, um, yeah, we're, we're connected in this way, you know? Nice. Amazing. You know, I really value music. I was born in the seventies, so I went to record stores and flipped through yeah. and loved the entire experience of the artwork the going into a store, the feeling of looking through albums and having other people walk in and just, you know, people watching while you're looking at albums and everything about it. So I, I do go into record stores and I purchase cool. vinyl because I want to support artists. What can I do to get you to press your album onto vinyl? And if you ever do, yeah. will you send me a signed copy? <laughs> I will I? send you. Well, the great news is, is that I will send you a signed copy because I did press it into no vinyl. No way, you did. Uh, yeah, amazing. So I will. Yeah, I'll be sure to send you that. Oh and, my um, gosh, Carla, that's so cool. Yeah, so I, I really cool. wanted to do it with this album because yeah. you know I do think I great, love the sound. Ooh, that'd be a perfect yeah. vinyl album yeah. to have because of the texture, like you said, and all exactly. Different, yeah. Exactly. Oh so my I gosh. just I So you already did it? Yeah. You already pressed it? I already did it. I did. I did. I I, I pressed I pressed a small batch, but I still have copies, so you will how, get one. How many batches did uh, how many did you how I just it? did like a like a hundred batches, you, you know, and I actually am gonna do I got a great response from it. So I think I, I I love that because you know, I don't get to press vinyl all the time, you know. It's one of those things yeah. that I was like, let me try it out and um and I did like think, you know, it's not right for every album, you know, because sometimes you get like really like new recordings today that um, are mastered in a way that the album even just you know, skips off the uh, <laughs> can't even play, you know, properly on the record player. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, is that because so, of a lack of skill in the mastering process? Because it was not, just mastered for something different. For something a totally you know, different mastered. medium. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. You know. So oh my gosh, I that's so like, cool. That gives me an idea. Yeah. I, have a, I have actually have a record store right next to our yoga studio. I oh, cool. I couldn't believe it when I saw the sign saying, I'm going to sell records. I thought, what am I in the twilight zone right now? Because <laughs> I, I had no vinyl at all. I'd given it all away from back in the 90s or whatever. And I, I thought... um. Oh my gosh, a record store. I'm buying a record player and now all my money yeah. goes into that. But um I'm I uh maybe I could even get a couple of copies from you and try to yeah. sell them for you next yeah, door. That. that would be awesome. That'd be really cool. All right. I feel you know, I really want like these records to like I want people to to go not not to say in the right hands, but I I want people to listen to it and experience it. And I think um, you know, I, I too love those moments of going through record stores and this album is very much an album that I think, you know, you listen to from start to finish to really feel the benefit yeah. of it. Yeah. And I think, you know, records are that platform, you know, Oh man, I agree. I know that's, <laughs> yeah, it's a whole story that's being told yeah. Yeah, side A, side yeah. B. You got to go from start to finish Yeah. versus yeah. the like, Oh, I listen to three minutes of that song. Don't like it. Hit the next track. 
You yeah. know, it's just like we don't give yeah. it enough time anymore. You, we, we gotta like, no. you gotta, you gotta listen to it over and over and over and yeah. over. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh man, you that's know, so cool. Like it's- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you ever come to Florida? I wanna, I wanna host you here. Yeah, for, for you a know, sound I have bath. some family uh, that just oh, moved do? out there, so no way. I am planning. I well, will well, come well, out. Where out there? I'm trying to think where where she where she is in the state know, of Florida. She just moved there. This, yeah, oh, I feel like maybe close to Fort Lauderdale. Oh, maybe wow. I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, we're really close to Fort Lauderdale, so please, okay, please, please, really let cool. me know. Please don't hesitate. Don't feel like oh, I'm, I'm not. I don't want to bother this person or something. Like, <laughs> please let me know. <laughs> well, I'd love that, and I feel like I'd, I'd love to get to know more about you. We talked all about me. So. Well, this is all about you, so <laughs> that's, that's the purpose of this. <laughs> oh man. Well, Carla, I've thoroughly enjoyed this. I was so looking forward to it. I was completely honored to have this opportunity. I've never had a chance to speak to an LA musician that's actually doing it for real. And uh, so, so I I really, I thank you and I can't wait for, uh, to hear feedback. Everyone listening, send us a note, an email, all of Carla's links are in the description. You can, Everyone has <laughs> listening music devices like Spotify and Tidal and all those different places. So um, you can listen to it right now. I'll have the link. You just click on it. Definitely go listen. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, is there anything else, Carla, before we close that you'd like to add as I mean, you've given us plenty of inspiration and motivation yeah. here, so you don't have to say anything more, but I'm curious if there's anything else that you would like to I mean. The Embrace team. the weekend I mean. <laughs> <All right. Yeah. laughs> and get some fun shine. We got some great fun shine going fun here. Shine. What about in LA? What's the weather like there right now? It's April. It's, uh, what's today's day? It's April okay. 6th. You know, yeah. we've had our little LA winter, but yeah. I'm, it's great for me being a New England person. So yeah, you're right. I'll take anything. There's nothing that's going to scare me off after living in Boston for a while. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. That's cool. <laughs> Well, thank you, Carla. I will have a good weekend. I am looking forward to it. And um, I will stay in touch. And thank you so much. Thank you. Please do. Thank you. (laughs) Native Yoga Toddcast is produced by myself. The theme music is dreamed up by Bryce Allen. If you like this show, let me know. If there's room for improvement, I want to hear that too. We are curious to know what you think and what you want more of, what I can improve. And if you have ideas for future guests or topics, please send us your thoughts to info at Native Yoga Center. You can find us at nativeyogacenter.com. And hey, if you did like this episode, share it with your friends, rate it and review, and join us next time. <laughs>